From September 15th to October 15th, Nine News is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Tonight, we take you deeper into the life of Marissa Molina, a teacher, a community leader, and she's done it all despite facing the challenges of being an immigrant. Marissa Molina has always been trying to say something, Solo un minuto más. but she keeps getting interrupted. Thanks for the heads up. I think it's hard when, when you're in a place and you can't fully be yourself. Marissa was first interrupted when she was nine. We didn't have much and we started with nothing when we were in Colorado. Her family of five had left Mexico for a new life in Glenwood Springs. Yeah, when I started at Glenwood Springs Elementary School, in my grade level, there were about five kids who didn't speak English. Whether it was being held back. So you're younger than everyone else, and you also don't speak English, so you really belong in fourth grade. Or telling her high school counselor why she didn't put her social security number on her college applications. And I looked at him with tears in my eyes, and I said, well, I don't have one. That's why I didn't write it down. Or whether it was making it to Fort Lewis College, never knowing whether she'd ever use her degree. I understood how hard that struggle was going to be, but not really understanding the realities of what it meant to be undocumented. My parents had always told us, like, this is not something you share with people. This is something that's our story, and it could put us in a really dangerous place to expose that to anybody. Marissa's voice was silenced. Maybe I had done something wrong. Maybe I was that criminal that people said I was. At least I didn't get scared this time. But today, Marissa is unafraid of using her voice. Pueden entrar. I was so proud of her. I cried. The voice that teaches Spanish students at DSST's Green Valley Ranch High School. She has a great connection with students by talking to them and pushing them to do their best. Yeah, she's kind of like my second mom. Number two. We're free to ask her anything because she's like us. Marissa Molina, please come up. She's a voice that was also honored at the White House. I mean, we don't really see a lot of Hispanics in the White House. And it was, I was so happy. If I had the opportunity to step into the White House as a champion of change, like anything is possible. And now she wants her students' voices to be heard. It's not about what they can do in this classroom and how well they can test. Voices, she says, will not be interrupted. It's about how much of that knowledge can they take and use it to change the world. Que les vaya bien. Marissa says her goal is to see her very first class graduate. She says one day she might actually want to get into politics. So mm. she's just an inspirational person. She's really making a difference in that school, and you can see it in the kids. I mean, that one one student started crying. I mean, she's so she said she had never had her own, you know, Hispanic teacher. And I said never. She said never, not until she met Marissa. Oh, so, the connection is made. Yeah, yeah, when a student is emotional, life changing. Yep. That's for Can't sure. Beat that. Evidence of Colorado's rich history can be found all across our state and nestled in the small town of Coneos, not far from the New Mexico border, is a place where Hispanic settlers laid the foundation of Catholicism in Colorado. From September 15th to October 15th, Nine News is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month and today Nine News reporter Maya Rodriguez takes us on a visit to the oldest, par oldest parish in the state, still going strong after more than 160 years. It's a stillness found deep in the San Luis Valley, and one that can be found in a special place there, attracting its share of locals, visitors, and pilgrims. First of all, it's very, very beautiful. That place is Our Lady of Guadalupe Church in Conejos. It's also known as the oldest parish in Colorado. Father Sergio Robles is the priest there. We have a lot of history in this small place. It all started 162 years ago, and the church's auspicious roots began with a donkey. The story goes like this. Back in the early 1850s, a group of settlers from New Mexico was making its way through this area. They stopped nearby to rest, but when it was time to go, one of their donkeys refused to get up. They rifled through one of the bags it was carrying and found a small statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The group vowed to build a church in her honor on that site. And the legend says only then did the donkey finally stand up. 
Church records are painstakingly noted, written in Spanish, in old bound books. They indicate everything from the first baptisms performed in 1853 to how much the church charged for funerals. For a funeral featuring three priests and a procession through town, in 1865 it would set you back a hundred dollars. We charge for funeral today $75. You charge less for a funeral today yes. than you did in 1865. That's true, yeah. The original church flooded a few years later, so parishioners built a new one on this piece of land. It stood here ever since, but was nearly destroyed in 1926 when an electrical fire broke out on, of all days, Ash Wednesday. When the smoke cleared, what remained were the two church towers made of adobe. Parishioners rebuilt once more. We rewire that church again because we don't have to have the same problem. And they haven't since then. The church is often visited by people traveling on nearby roads on their way through southern Colorado. But it's also unique for locals, too. It's just inspiring. It's inspiring. And so uh, that's how I look at, at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church here is it's, it's a special church for everyone in the community and part of something bigger as well. We need to keep our culture. We need to keep uh, our traditions. Because if you lose your tradition, your culture, you lose your identity. An identity still tying the Hispanic settlers of yesterday to the ones still here today. In Conejos, with photojournalist Manny Sotelo, Maya Rodriguez, Nine News. Hmm. Wow, beautiful place, I had no idea. In addition to being the oldest parish, the oldest, parish, the oldest Catholic-affiliated group in Colorado, also began at Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yeah, it's called Madres Cristianos, a group of mothers who are still active in that very area. How so about that? Thank you to Manny and Maya. They yeah, that's remarkable. Some beautiful stories, and now you can understand why tourists and visitors hmm. come through and say, I've got to go into that church. A little piece of history there, mm -hmm. pretty place. For the past several weeks, Nine News has been marking Hispanic Heritage Month, and today marks the final day of that celebration. Tonight, Nine News reporter Jonathan Gonzalez and photojournalist Chris Shaleen take us out to the Colorado Symphony. It doesn't take long for the musicians to take their seats inside Denver's Betcher Hall. That's the beauty of music. Without words, you can have these amazing moments. What's amazing is how this mixture of sound will all come together when 31-year-old Andres Lopera takes the stage. We have 80 musicians on stage or more, and they all have their ideas of music. You, as the conductor, are the one responsible kind of like to shape those ideas into one sole artistic product. We would have never imagined coming from Colombia being the assistant conductor of the Colorado Symphony. I mean, Colombia is a beautiful place, great culture, great food, happy people. Culture, music started changing and shaping the country, which was really beautiful. Lopera came to the States at age 24 and earned two music-related master's degrees. At the beginning, I cannot say it was not as scary. It was, it was very scary a little bit, but it was also very exciting to get to learn everything, see everything, and that's the beautiful thing about music. And after about two years conducting in Portland, Andres and his baton have made their way to Colorado. So the conductor is the one person who gets to listen all of the sounds and is able to blend all of that um, into a beautiful kind of performance. Orchestral music is not that fancy thing or like that crazy, elegant thing that, that it doesn't seem so approachable. I wouldn't be here if, it were, if that was true. So this for me is kind of like a dream. We all are welcome in this in this beautiful family of the Colorado Symphony. So come and say hi. In Denver, Jonathan Gonzalez, Nine News. <laughs> Nine News beginning our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. And today we meet a family whose roots in Colorado date all the way back to the 1930s. And they have grown so much, they are now the size of a small town. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Over the years, they've lost touch, and many have never even met. So they were long overdue for a family reunion. Belinda Leon, Manny Sotelo went to the party, and they bring us their story. How are you? I'm good, and you? 
Tina greets everyone entering the exhibit hall like their family. Hi! Because Good, and you? they are. It's the Martinez family reunion, and more than 800 family members are expected. All the people that are here are descendants of these two individuals. Hello! Through the hugs and the hellos, it's clear to see the gap between generations is wide. Where's your other son? Carmen and her cousins are hoping to strengthen their bond and help support the younger generation in the family. On weekends, our parents would pack us all up and we'd go visit one of the aunts or uncles. Children that know their, their family are more resilient in life. They have a sense of belonging and they don't feel alone and they have a sense of pride. And I believe that this is what a lot of our kids need. And the get together couldn't have come at a better time. <laughs> In the last six weeks, we have lost an aunt, a very important aunt, my dad's sister. And then we lost another aunt, my Aunt Mary, a week after we buried my Aunt Sally. And then last week, we lost a niece. And it's been hard on us. We've been looking forward to this for a very long time. A celebration of family heritage. We want to retain that culture. We want to retain uh, not only the, the dances and the and, uh, different dichos uh, uh, and uh, celebrations of the family. We want them to know exactly uh, how w these things came about. You know, not, not just that they were uh, something from the past, but something that was ingrained in us because of uh, who we are and where we came from. It's likely that a reunion like this won't happen again. So it's a blessing today that we get to see all this family. The descendants of Cayetano and Martina sharing memories and making new ones. If nothing else, at least they won't be strangers anymore. So Uncle Roy said that it's safe to date anybody from the green table. <laughs> oh. With photojournalist Manny Sotelo. Who said that? Belen de Leon, 9 News. Wow, what a group. So how does a family of more than 800 stay in touch? Well, like everyone else, through social media. They have a Facebook page. Genius, right? Yeah. Okay. We are asking you to share your pictures of your familia using yeah. the hashtag MyFamilia my, my Col CO Colorado. And you can see these pictures online. Our Heritage Hispanic Month series goes through the middle of October. We have some really great plan stories planned. Visit 9news.com for more content on our series. They're right. It used to be a time when you did every weekend. You went to see your family. Yeah. That's what you should do. Yeah. And we don't have time for that anymore. No, we or we don't. don't make the time. No, so we don't. Good for them. That's amazing. Just two people and that entire yes. wonderful family. That's yeah, an amazing thing. That. Great so story. Share your pictures. We want to remind you the big Denver celebration to mark 205 years since Mexico gained its independence is tonight. Lynn is hosting or emceeing the event. A lot of people think of Cinco de Mayo when they think of Mexican independence. It's actually September 16th that marks the beginning of the Mexican War of Independence. The event is tonight at 7 at Better Concert Hall. Tickets are free. Seating is first come, first serve. So um, check it out if you need to go to the website. All the information is there. Otherwise, head on down. Belinda is a terrific MC. She will tear it up. And look at the kind of great entertainment. Yeah. Really good entertainment. I hope she gets out time. there and sings with them a little because she's very talented mm -hmm. that way.